100 grit. Yep. Usually I'll come back to it, I'll just run my hand over it. I want it to feel like it's rough, relatively smooth. You see the shadowing that's right there? There's a little shadow line. That's because there's a little bit of micro or a little bit of uh, that slurry left there. So I'll hit that again just to make sure I get that off. But it's feeling pretty good. Now this 100 grit was 100 grit when I started, it's probably 220 now. It doesn't take long for this to start wearing out that sand Yeah. Yeah. Now you can see the difference already of what it looks like. You see how the, the vein has come back? I personally like it when the vein appears and disappears and appears and disappears. So you do, some guys like a tighter vein where they see the vein all the way through it. I like it where it looks more natural. When you take a piece of stone and you cut it, you normally don't see a vein, it's just a straight vein. Now sometimes when you cut the stone and the one part you'll see a vein and the end of the other one, you don't see it. You don't see it at all. Yeah. So it looks more natural when it comes and goes. Uh, it'll work in, in anything that's porous enough to take it. So if you put it on, you can put it on concrete floors, you can put it on microtopping, you can put, you can put it on virtually anything to, be able to get the protection that you want. Uh, the only drawback to this sealer at all is the fact that it takes seven days to full cure. Okay? Now that doesn't mean you can't put it in solid, you can't move it, you can't touch it. You can usually do that within a 24 hour period. But the problem is, is if within a seven-day period, if you took it into someone's home and they set a glass of iced tea on it and that iced tea would condensate, it'll leave a ring. So that seven-day period needs to be adhered to for use. Okay. Um, many guys that I know that do the countertops, since you can go through the countertops so quickly, uh, they'll take it and they won't install it for at least five days. They just, they just won't install it. Because when you tell the homeowner, listen, you can't use this countertop for five days or seven days, whatever the case is, somebody's going to put something on it. The and, and then they're going to call you and say, listen, I have this water spot. I'm not going to get rid of the water spot. And then there's, that becomes a whole other issue altogether. So most guys that I know that are installing a lot of countertops, they'll build the countertops, they'll let it sit in their shop and cure for five days. Just let it cure. You mean you say for the for the composite, right? Yeah, I mean, technically, you you could literally with this product, say you were building a small countertop, uh, you could build the product today, you could finish the product tomorrow, the following day you could have the product installed. I mean, you could you could do it that fast. Right. So now this is three parts part A to two parts part B. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna take this and catalyze it. We're gonna put them together and catalyze it. We're gonna use a, a drill, a mechanical drill to do this. And when it says in the directions that you mechanically mix it, this with your stick or something is not mechanically mixing it. It needs that motion of that mixer to bring the two chemicals together. And it mixes for three minutes. You need a machine. Yep. You need just a drill or something to mix it for three minutes. The reason being is, is there's a chemical reaction that's going on. Now, when we first put this together, we did a lot of tests. A one-minute mix time, a two-minute mix time, three-minute, four-minute. I mean, we did a lot of testing. The three-minute mix time is serious. It's talking you need to mix it for three minutes. Okay? So we'll, we'll, let's go with... Um, Three to one. Three to one. Three to one. 
too funky. That's one. Closer to the eight to one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to almost add eight ounces. I'll probably do a little bit less. And by the way, uh, there's an induction period where these two chemicals are coming together. Usually you want to wait five to seven minutes before you add the water to it. Let those two chemicals come together. We're going to dispense with that and just move forward here. So now I'm going to add my seven parts of water to that. Oh, it has to be water. Water, yes. Okay. And then this one, I'm going to add two parts of water to this one. So it says, um, nope, don't have that. So let's see if I got ounces here. Okay, I got four ounces. So what I'll do is I'll add eight ounces of water to that. And that'll be a two to one ratio, right? Like that. Whoop. So what I can do now is come back and mix these. These you only have to mix for about a minute just to mix the water into it. Roller covers. The high density foam roller cover is what you want to use. Hot dog, they, some guys call them hot dog covers. But these, these are the best cover that you want to use. It'll cause the less bubbles less problems, but it will also help this to get into the product. What you want to do with this is flood it. You want this to drink this. Remember I was saying that the concrete's inherently thirsty, it wants to drink the water, so the water that's within this prime coat is actually acting as a vehicle to get the sealer down into the pores. And just work, I usually work left to right is my preference. But right now what you want to do is you want to just keep it wet. Now you see how much sealer you have that I have here. So it, a little goes a long ways at this point. So you're just going to keep rolling it, keeping it wet. And what's going to happen is, as you're rolling it, you're going to see that after a little bit, after it stays wet for a while, it's, it's going to start rejecting it. I'm not putting any pressure on the roller that you don't want to put pressure on the roller. What you're going to see is you're going to see as you're rolling it, you're going to see more and more bubbles start picking up. Those bubbles are telling you that it's drank enough. Sorry. And it's not going to accept any more sealer. Make sure you get your edges. I usually like to do my edges first so I don't get a run. Going down it. What are you doing the edges? Just use Run your, edges. Just use your foam roller. It's not gonna be sort of the same thing, you know. Yeah, it's still gonna. You just don't want to have lines that, you know. Roll it down. A lot of that you can get rid of because you are just soaking it up. Okay, see how it's starting to bubble up is I'm using the roller. So 
So then what I'll do is I'll, I'll just literally take the roller and squeeze just a little bit and push off any extra that's on there. You don't need it now. And then I'll take my roller cover and I'll squeeze it out. And then I'll start rolling until the bubbles go away. Right through the bubbles. I want to roll at this point so it almost goes dry. On this prime coat, if you leave lines, the lines will be on every consecutive coat afterwards. You can use rack? Use what? Rack. No, no, it'll smear it. That's why this roller cover, these roller covers are best they work better than any kind of mohair or anything else. The, any other roller covers will actually cause lines. Yeah, that's all. What I normally look at when I get to this stage, I'll look at the light, you know, and I'll make sure that I don't see any lines. If I see lines right now, I'll work at it to make sure the lines are going away. And as soon as it looks like it's getting dry underneath my roller, that's when I'll put my first two to one coat on. Now, the nice thing is, is I can use this roller cover right away. I don't have to change out a roller cover to do my two to one. So with the two to one now, that I've got it all rolled out, it's all nice, almost as dry underneath where I've been rolling. I'll add my two to one. Now, because you've already got it sealed, you don't need a whole lot of product here. So just put a nice even coat on it. That's the color we, we can get, or it's going to be a little different? That's the color it's going to look like. Okay. Does it make sense to leave the first coat overnight? No. I actually prefer to do the second coat right away. Um, let that let that go that way, because you're always, you're always mixed up more than you need. So I'll mix my 7 to 1, mix a 2 to 1, do a 7 to 1, do a 2 to 1, let it sit. Don't try to do another coat on top of that. you got to let those two sit. And then you're going to have a lot, of, lot better success. The next day, within a 12-hour period, put your second coat on. If it's past 24 hours, you've got to sand it before you put another coat on. The second coat, two to one. What? Second coat the next day, two to one. Two to one. Yep. Now you can go a three to one. You could go to four to one. It's all up to what you would rather do with it. If if it's really dry outside. I would probably do four to ones instead of two to ones. It needs moisture to cure. So if it's sucking the moisture out so fast, a lot of times if it's too dry outside, what happens is it remains tacky. It doesn't start to dry. So now what I'll do is I'll roll right through the bubbles. Now I'm actually starting to really build sealer. It's not going to be a high coat sealer. If there's one drawback to this sealer, this is it. It takes time to put out. Um, 
the next day, when you came back next day, do you have to clean up with the alcohol or just to pour a little bit of dust on it? Yeah, just clean it off. You can clean it with water, actually. You don't have to even use the alcohol. Uh, but yeah, at least clean it. Some guys like to sand it anyways, because if there's any dust or anything in the surface, they get it out of it. If you leave bubbles at the surface, like if you walked away from this, all those bubbles are going to show up the next coat. How many coat you put? Three? Three, three, is the, three is the minimum. Yeah. No, three is the minimum. Three is the minimum. There's some guys that will use this and they'll go out to a one-to-one. -one, one part water to one part catalyzed product. I suggest you don't do that because that's you're asking for some issues um, with cure time. And if it's too dry outside, you don't have enough moisture. But there's some guys that have success in it, and that's what they do. That Jeff, J and M, he likes to do a lot of one-to-one -one coats. And his guys have been doing it for years. They know what they're doing with it. See how the bubbles are starting to break? It also comes in a gloss. It's not a high gloss. I believe just this a gloss. This was the old one, I believe. Didn't this didn't is probably the matte, matte. Yeah. Matte, I think gloss. Yeah. Because I believe that we didn't have the gloss. We did. Yeah, that's matte. right. Yep. That's the gloss. I this is, no, this is the matte. This is the gloss. I don't remember because it, the old one is the it's still wet right now. It'll say on the can whether it's it doesn't say the gloss and yeah. the yeah. If it doesn't say gloss, it is the matte. Okay. But in 2014, you had only one. Word. Only one. Yeah. I don't remember which one was. But that was the one. From the old days. There you go. It's done. What's the quantity in that? This this one here is a three to one. Oh, three to one. Three to one. Millimeter marks in this, and go that way. Just mix this one for about a minute. And with this little amount in here, I don't even need to mix it for a minute because I've just not much there. Okay. Use your wife's mixer. Works. This one, remember, like I said, you don't need to spend the time that you spent with the other one. Again, work it left to right. How many? Oh, I would do three on this one as well. You do three call in one hour. Uh, no, you, this one you could do. You could do all quotes in one day of this if you wanted to. So I have it out. I'm going to come back in. I'm going to back roll it. I'm 
I'm going to bend down and look at it to make sure I don't see any lines and I walk away. Just walk away. Don't spend that much time on that one. Okay? Because if you spend a lot of time, like I said, you can actually roll roller marks into it. That's it, huh? That's the difference. This is the water base. But what makes it? But you guys use water. That one's more broken. Well, we haven't decided yet, but you know, whichever gives us the. Do another coat as soon as it's dry to the touch. You could put another coat on it. If it's past the 24 hours, you need to sand it before you recoat it. All right? Because you need to get so hard, it needs that bond. So you need to get a mechanical bond by sanding. Okay? What sandpaper do you use to fold? I usually use, uh, whenever I do it between coats, I use a 220 on an orbital sander. 220? Yeah, and I always, whenever I sand, I never go in a straight line. It's always in a circle. So if I'm sanding by hand, it's always in a circle. If I'm sanding with an orbital, it's always the dual action. And then it never shows lines. As soon as you, if you start sanding by hand and you start going in a straight line, what we're used to by following the grain, <laughs> you know, with us, if we don't follow the grain, you're going to see every sand mark. Yeah. Well, in this, you start introducing straight marks, and it starts to draw. Don't go below that. If you go below that, you're going to put marks in it. You're going to see it back. But that's why some people like the PC-12 over the XS-327. You can see how much more it enhances the color and how much more bling you're going to get at the end result. So if you've got somebody who wants that high gloss, that's what you're going to use. Now, I would suggest with the PC-12, the high gloss, the when you're finished with that, I would suggest you put a coat of sure finish or some type of wax as another protecting coat. You don't have to do it, but it's something that you can even give the customer a little jar of wax and say, listen, you need to, if you want, you need to get certain areas where your bling goes away, just use this wax to bring it back. Yeah, it's yeah, it's it's yeah, all those pinholes that are in the pinholes when you're doing the PC-12, it's hard to get rid of those pinholes. So when you're slurring it, you want to make sure you cover up all those pinholes so that they don't come back each time. But if I will the coat, the next coat, the next coat, they'll probably still come back. Really? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah